Well, you can probably tell from all the mess that I have just now finished epoxying in the motor mount slash airframe, the four inch part. And it has three centering rings in here. The top one's right there. And then the aft centering ring is right here. I'm gonna put that on later after I install the real button. And then there's gonna be a fourth, a fifth center ring that will go up here. And I spent a lot of time cleaning this up with rubbing alcohol because you don't want a little bit of epoxy left over. It's easy to clean off when it's wet and it's almost impossible when it dries. And then multiple times I have put in this retainer to make sure that it is aligned the way I want it because I need to have it at just the point that's gonna be flush with the bottom of the fin so it'll have a good support of the fin as the rocket goes up. So it needs to be right flush up against that. But then at the same time, I need to have the centering ring inside here flush against the top of this fin. I've just covered my fin with paper to protect it from getting glue on it. So I've checked that a whole bunch of times while this is drying and it looks good. And then like I said, I've used rubbing alcohol over and over again to make sure that I don't have any drips. Also inside here, I had to check for drips a million times because that's where my airfoil is going to glue in later after I put in the rail button. And so the plan will be to have this airfoil, which is a tail cone from the Mac six inch black fly that I'm reversing, as I said in earlier videos, that's gonna go down here and I'm gonna put a, I'll glue it on, but also I'm hoping to put this long bolt all the way through from across the six inch thing through the motor mount slash airframe so that this is impossible to come free. You can see what it looks like down inside after I've epoxied, you can see the aft centering ring, current aft centering ring. There's gonna be another one here, of course, the one that's attached to the retainer. And while this is drying, another thing I'm checking really carefully is down inside these fin slots to make sure that there's no epoxy that's gonna get in the way of the fins when I put them in later because I'm not gonna put the fins in until later and if the epoxy dries down in there, then it'll be humped up and then you try to put the fin in and it'll never be straight. So always crucial to make sure that there is epoxy where you want it to be and none where you don't want it to be because it's easy to take it off now with rubbing alcohol. I'm just using this stuff from the pharmacy, regular drugstore. It's easy to do that now, but in about an hour, it's almost impossible to take it off. So I'm being extra careful with all these things. And if you're interested in the epoxy, I'm just using this standard rocket epoxy. Here's the resin. Here's the hardener. There are a million different opinions about epoxy for rocketry. And you can look up on Rocketry Forum or many other places, uh, Facebook sites where people can discuss their opinions about epoxy. I like rock epoxy because it's kind of a one size fits all basic epoxy. You get that sort of peanut buttery consistency when you mix it up. And it's, you know, works for fillets, it works for centering rings. A lot of people like to use a different type for their fillets and so on. Uh, I find it easier just to have one type. Nice thing too about rock epoxy is it will come with some coloring. This, in this case, it's black. So I'll let that dry before I put in this aft center ring and retainer because I want to leave it open to put in the rail button and also so that I can do internal fillets down in there. The fins will go through the fin slots and then I'll slide a dowel in there with a lot of epoxy and glop it all in there so that we can do internal fillets down inside there on both sides of the fins, above and below, and also way down there on that aft centering ring. 
but I'll let this dry first because I'm going to need to do the fins one at a time to make them good and straight. I don't have a fin jig for a six inch rocket with four fins. I have an old fin jig for a five fin rocket. So I'm just going to go one at a time using that fin jig, uh, one fin at a time, adding the internal fillets. And I'll also have the external fillets on each fin, which as I mentioned before, is not my favorite part of the project. Some people love doing fillet artistry. I like other aspects of rocketry, but I'll make good strong fillets. And I'll just conclude this video with another overview of what the rocket looks like in the design and open rocket. As I've said before, it's a six inch to four inch transition there. And the four inch rocket is a 98 millimeter motor mount slash airframe that goes all the way through the rocket for extra strength. So it starts on the aft end as the motor mount, the same tube continues on up through the nose cone. And I'm doing this just for fun, for something interesting. It won't make the rocket better than any other kind of rocket. It won't make it fly better. It's just an interesting challenge I wanted to try. And if you're looking for standard building practices, this is not the place to be. It'd be better to go to Apogee website, Tim Van Milligan's build videos or Wildman videos or various other people out there that have standard builds. This is an unusual one that I'm doing just for fun as a challenge and I'm making these videos for my own entertainment, but you're very welcome to join along if you'd like.